Today I'm going to try something different. Instead of putting text on the screen after recording, I'm going to try narrating as I'm working. And today I'm going to be changing out relays for the fuel pump and the ECU. This blue one is the modern equivalent to this silver one that came on the car. Although this is the wrong relay, you can see from the wiring diagram. This has two switches, this one only has one. The fuel pump and the ECU use this two switch relay. I was using this as a test and wondering why the fuel pump was running when the car was off. I'll put the, par the part number for this relay, which is the updated part number for this relay that came out of the car. You can see I scribbled on it because it's dead. This is the test that I'm going to be doing today. I've already gone through the other steps and determined that there is power going to the fuel pump, there's power going to the relay, and this step is to test the relay itself. This is how this test is going to work. I'm going to be putting battery voltage to two terminals on the relay. And I just use these because my jumper wires don't, don't hook onto my battery posts. I'm going to put battery negative onto post number 85. On the relay it'll show which terminal is which. You can see on this one over here it's a little 86. And then there's the little 85 on this one. That's what I'm attaching the jumpers to. And battery positive, 86. Now it does click on, so that part still works. But the test has you check for continuity between these three terminals. It should have continuity between both of these. And I'm only getting it on the middle one and it's kind of spotty. According to the book, that means this relay is faulty. And the same test for this. I want continuity between these three posts with the relay clicked on. Okay, so it clicks on. Ooh, much better. Much, much better. I removed the lower dash pad. This isn't required to get to the fuel pump relay location. I mostly did it for my own curiosity and to see if I get any more legroom. Removing the lower dash isn't required. It definitely makes getting to this a lot easier. If you don't take it out, it's all the way back here which doesn't look that bad but then you have the ECU mounted right here and the dash pad comes right here there's no room to reach your hand in there and this is mounted to this and you need to have a uh, six different limbs on your wrist to reach it I've done this before, which is why this is already off, and I'm not going to reattach it because of just how hard it was to remove it. New relays in. Exciting. I'm going to leave this as the disaster that it is right now, and then I'm going to test the car to make sure the fuel pump still works, and if it doesn't, I have easy access. 
going to run like crap because the battery's been unplugged and I never did fix the check engine light. So it might not start and run on the first start. Let's try anyway. All right, let's see what happens. It hasn't been started in a while. That's why the lifters clattered so loudly. kind of worried at how loud the lifters were. I'm pretty sure there's still oil in here. Yeah. It's a little low. Maybe I'll add some more. The other thing I wanted to add to the system was something that can measure fuel pressure. I just bought this cheapo little PSI gauge and 1 8 NPT fitting and long long ago I bought this which is a bolt that goes into the fuel rail with an 1 8 NPT fitting that this will screw onto and this elbow is just optional with the Schrader valve this was at one point for use with a fuel pressure gauge but my fuel pressure gauge was worthless and leaked everywhere so I ditched it and now I'm going to put this gauge on the fuel rail and see what my fuel pressure is something I've always wondered and suspected was the problem for my lean condition was low fuel pressure and now I'll finally be able to tell this is the bolt in question that I was talking about putting this gauge right onto the fuel rail this bolt is the same size as this bolt on the fuel rail. It threads right in and I can just leave this on the engine and check fuel pressure whenever I like. With the car running, all I have to do is pop the hood and take a peek at the gauge. out of the engine bay before you close the hood. Maybe then it'll actually close.
it's now the next day. I've given the thread sealer time to dry and I'm going to try priming the system to see if this gauge leaks at all. How I'm going to prime the fuel system is I'm going to take this incorrect relay that I mentioned earlier, take out the correct relay, plug this in, and the fuel pump will run when the car is off and the system will be primed. When it's primed, I'll be able to see if the gauge leaks. If it doesn't leak, it'll be safe to drive. And if it does leak, I'll be able to catch it in time. Okay, let's try this out. Pump is running right now. Okay. Okay, looks like we have a bit of a leak. I think I didn't tighten the, the bolt all the way in and the banjo fitting is leaking at the washer, so I'm gonna have to tighten it up and hopefully I don't ruin the, uh, the orientation of the gauge. I find it very strange that as soon as the fuel pump is turned off, all the fuel goes, pressure goes away. I thought the system was supposed to hold some pressure in it for a while before it goes away. Or maybe that's just a, maybe that's just a sob thing. Oh yeah. yeah that, rubber on this washer is toast. That's probably why it's leaking. Oh yeah, look at that. I just came back from the store because I didn't have the washers on hand anymore, which they were probably copper like these that I just bought, and I couldn't use them again anyway, since these are crush washers. These were harder to find than I thought, because they're not a normal size, and these are actually for brakes. They look like they'll fit, so I'm going to try it anyway. Nice. First try. I'll give the thread sealer some time to dry, and then I'll come test it for leaks again in a couple hours. So there's a problem somewhere in the fuel system. I do have a new fuel pressure regulator and I plan on putting that in because I have that and I don't have a fuel pump check valve, which is the other suspect. So the next video I'm going to be installing this and see if it works to fix my fuel pressure problem. This is off of a Volvo actually, but it shares this, the same part number and it is identical to the one on the car. I'll install this and see if it helps.